budget printers can be just as good as the more expensive options if you're looking at printing quality alone. Now you might be asking, what makes the more expensive ones more expensive? The two main factors that usually contribute to the price the most is the build size or the maximum amount of volume that you can print at, as well as upgraded componentry like a better controller board, better screen, and hot ends that can go up to higher temperatures. The addition of some extra features like an onboard camera and wireless interactivity so that you can start, monitor, and control your printer wirelessly even if you aren't at home might be very attractive to a lot of people, but those features unfortunately come at an extra price as well. The speed at which some of the printers can print is also a very big plus for a lot of printing veterans out there, but the quicker the printer can go, the higher its price usually is as well. For somebody who is completely new to printing and only wants to get a printer to start with and test the waters of 3D printing and see whether this is a hobby that you would want to stick with for the long run, you really don't have to break your bank on your first purchase. There are many budget options out there for those who just want to get started in printing or even those who have been printing for a long time and looking for an extra small factor printer that they can add to their printing farm. The Cobra Go might just be the perfect printer to fit that build. With a build volume of 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters, a maximum hot air temperature of 260 degrees Celsius, as well as a maximum bed temperature of 110 degrees Celsius. Auto leveling so that you don't have to worry about that first layer being even all over the build plate. This printer is basically able to print anything you would really want to, as well as in most commercial filaments available to you. For its auto leveling, it uses a proximity sensor, which detects how far away the nozzle is at over 20 different areas across the entire bed, using the data that it collected to make sure that the nozzle is always the correct distance away from the layer that it is printing. Because it uses a proximity sensor, that means that you can only use metallic beds on this printer. Otherwise, it won't detect any of the other materials like glass or plastic, and it will push that nozzle right through the bed, causing serious damage to your printer and to your nozzle as well. But on that note, this printer comes with a spring steel magnetic build plate that you can easily remove and pop off prints with. It has a great texture and it just looks dang good. <laughs> it also uses E3D nozzles, which are cheap to replace and come in a variety of different diameters from 0.3 to 0.5. In terms of looks, I believe that the Anycubic Cobra Go is definitely one of the top contenders for the best looking budget printer of 2023, with the majority of its profile covered in good looking end caps or aesthetic plating. And the addition of its power supply being hidden away in the base, this printer has an overall finished and clean look. Although I do wish they chose a different accenting color instead of navy blue. To really see what the Cobra Go is capable of, I decided to run it through a few test prints. One to test its quality, as well as putting it through an all-in-one torture test to really see how it does with overhangs, bridging, etc. For the quality prints, I decided to choose a Benchy, because you can't have enough Benchies. For the basic settings that I used, in terms of the slicer, I used Cura 5.4, which had a pre-made profile for the Cobra Go. The print speed was 50mm per second, a bed temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, and a hot end temperature of 200 degrees Celsius. I retraction enabled and found that the best settings for retraction was a speed of 30 millimeters per second and a distance of 2.5 millimeters per retraction. The filament that I used was Wanau PLA Red. After printing a bunch of benches and fine tuning and changing the settings until I get it as near perfect as I really could, I can really say that this printer did really well. There are still some areas that need work, but I believe with further fine tuning and testing, I would be able to get this printer to print near perfectly. It handled the overhangs well, it handled the bridging well, the layer adhesion is as good as you would really want it to be, and the detail is great for only printing at a 0.2mm layer height. A few things that really stood out to me on this printer is that the magnetic bed is really high quality. The adhesion is great, so the prints don't lift all. It also has a strong magnet, so the bed doesn't slide around or lift off as it's printing. The screen might be small, but it has all the information you really need on it. The menu navigation is also very intuitive and easy to follow, and the knob is just plain satisfying to use. It has a filament load and unload system that pushes and pulls the filaments until you're prompted to stop with the push of a button. The auto leveling was very precise and the print's first layers were even all over the bed. The replacement parts are inexpensive and easy to get, so it wouldn't cost you an arm and a leg if something goes wrong. Mentioning most of the good things, I feel inclined to mention some of the bad things as well. The navy blue on the end caps and the fan shroud really give it a very very cheap look. In my opinion, it would have been better if they just stuck to black or used a more contrasting colour that made it 
pop a little bit more. It only uses a single lead screw to drive the Z-axis, which is common, but might be an issue for some printing enthusiasts. Finally, the assembly of this machine is a lot more hands-on than its competitors, with every part being disassembled, requiring you to put it all together, level it, and make sure that everything is perfectly lined up. It is a lot more tedious. Anycubic have a great video on their YouTube channel showing you step-by-step -step how to assemble this machine. I'll leave a link to that video in the description as well. After spending a lot of time and playing around with this printer, I can finally say that yes, this is a solid printer. It might not have all the bells and whistles that more expensive printers have, but in terms of printing alone, and if that's all that you're looking for, this printer is not a bad option. It might be a little bit of a pain in the ass to assemble, but most printers have some form of manual assembly or calibration needed with that learning curve of getting the perfect settings for your personal printer. It really is a fun journey. So I hope that this video has helped somebody out there make it a little bit of a decision on which printer they want to get next. If you have any further questions on the Cobra Go, you can leave that in the comment section below. And if you want to, let me know which printer you have your eyes set on and why. Thank you so much. Goodbye.